Welcome to the latest episode of The Gates of Graceland. I am Argo, here with Angie Marchese, the Director of Archives at Graceland. And since Record Store Day is on the 16th, we thought it would be neat to explore Elvis's record collection. Elvis's jukebox is laid out right before us. And I just got, a part of it. And though. I got chills, you know, just, just being this close to it here. You know, for years and years, I remember some of the first times that I toured Graceland, you go downstairs mm -hmm. and you see Elvis's record collection, and I would always think, man, what was Elvis listening to? And the unique thing about this is that what you actually see on tour is not even a tenth of what the collection contained. A tenth. Under the, under the TVs in the TV room, there's all these drawers that pull out, and the drawers were full of records, and 45s, and acetates, and sheet music. I mean, it was just overflowing. And then at the bottom of the stairs, there's a little closet where the projector for the, in the TV room was kept. And then also in that closet, more boxes of records. More records. More records. Well, and Elvis being the lover of all kinds of music, mm -hmm. uh, you have to think a lot of these he acquired, he, mm -hmm. he purchased probably in the early days, but then a lot he probably got a lot of promo material and mm -hmm. demos. So how do you go from finding all those records in those boxes to now preserving them the way they are here in front of us today? We literally took everything out that wasn't on display, that wasn't visible, and we brought everything back to the artifact building and you just start cataloging them. I mean, basically you put them in acid-free boxes and now they're in acid-free record sleeves. And you just start with the first one, you scan the label, you put in all the information, and then you start digging through to see when the record was released, you know, who was this artist, did Elvis ever cover that song? Because that's the unique thing about this collection. There's a lot of records that are here, and it's like, hey, I know that song. I never knew anybody sung it but Elvis. Right. <laughs> you know, right, but right, it's right. like these out these records came out first, and so there are things that Elvis would hear. I mean, because he was very much uh, an artist artist. He appreciated what everybody else was doing. And he would put his own spin on things, but he never, you know, he would always give credit where credit was due. I know one of the, the questions that we get a whole lot is, you know, what did Elvis like to listen to? Who were some of his favorite mm -hmm. artists? And as we'll see going through these record collection, you can't really narrow it down to one kind of person because he was into everything. He really was. It's such a vast collection, you know, but because it is almost record store day, I mean, this is back when, you know, Elvis would go to pop tunes and he would buy stacks of records and bring them home to Graceland and listen to them in the TV room. There's some upstairs in his bedroom still. You know, I mean, I remember going to record stores and buying records, do you? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> of yeah, course. No, yeah. And, you know, it's kind of a lost art these days because everyone now is just waiting to download their songs right. versus actually physically going, but there's something about actually physically going and getting the record. It's there's like, something special about that. Really and then, you is. know, there's a whole movement now too. It's, it does sound different when you put a record on a record player. And, and you set you, the needle and, down. Yeah, and you play mm -hmm. it. There is a different sound achieved. And uh, let's just dig in here. I'm okay. so curious as to you what <laughs> Elvis was listening to. And, and I just opened this box as we just got started mm -hmm. and, and found uh, this record from Lightning Slim, I'm Evil. And the unique thing is, look how worn it is. I mean, yeah. you could take it out of the sleeve. Yeah. And I mean, you can tell that these records were played. You know? very, yeah, this is very worn. Very worn. And of course, when I hear the words, I'm evil, I think of, you know, 68 Special. 68, sure, you sure. Know, um, and things like that. But so, this is a gritty blues song, It you know? really is. And, and it's, you know, Elvis obviously, you know, loved it because he obviously played it an awful lot. But, you know, the other unique thing going through the collection is the label art. Yes. You know, because that's kind of a lost art as well, because people don't physically get the vinyl records anymore, so you right. don't need a label on it. There are some uh, beautiful colors and interesting mm -hmm. names of uh, record labels that, yes. uh, of the day, which is, is so neat to, to be able to go through this here. And you all, as you said, you've, you've cataloged it all. So I guess it's it's kind of in a database now where you can search for yes. certain songs or certain things. Exactly. As a matter of fact, before pulling these boxes today, I was just like, you know, instead of actually digging to kind of preset what we were going to talk about, I just randomly pulled six boxes. So we could just start digging through so here. We just, just, start to going through them. just see what we could yeah. find, see what's interesting. Yeah. I mean, like this one right here, this is unique. It actually is Baby, Won't You Please Come Home by... The Jordanaires. The Jordanaires. 
You know, I mean, so there's probably a lot of people who Elvis actually ended up performing with at some point in time that we'll find here in the collection. Well, and this here's promotional record. So mm -hmm. I would assume, too, because Elvis was Elvis, he probably got a lot of demos. A, a lot, lot of demos. A lot of promotional him. things, a lot of record companies. Mm -hmm. what, you know, it's, as we were going through here earlier, we saw some notes from our buddy GK. We did. Who worked at the radio station here in Memphis. And I can just imagine GK bringing a crate of records over and saying, okay, hey, listen check to it this. out, check Elvis. This yeah, out. listen yep. to this. Yeah. Um, oh, our good old Sun Record label here. This is Bill Johnson, and it's Babalu. Babalu. Babalu on the Sun Record label. Babalu on the Sun Record label. <laughs> I, I thought it was fascinating to find uh, Hank Williams' record in here. Okay, mm -hmm. you know I know Elvis covered one Hank Williams right. song, but I, I don't think in, in the way the story goes is you know it sat on the shelf for years. Mm -hmm. He never viewed the song as complete. Right. And I kind of think maybe, you know, because Elvis was such a fan of Hank Williams, maybe he didn't want to... He didn't want to mess with it. He didn't want to mess with it yeah, too much, you know? Because you, know? you, find, uh, you find a Hank Williams record in here, this, this highly worn too, Love Sick Blues. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is obviously something Elvis loved. Yes. Um, let me see what else do we have in this box. We've got, this is, I love this label, it's really pretty, but it's This Is Real by Flory Tillman. All right. And then on the other side is Crazy Little Fingers. Crazy Little Fingers. And what's neat too are some of these records have markings on them mm -hmm. where there's X's and there's, uh, you know, some writing on some, some tape you can see. Yep. And I mean, it's almost kind of like, what does the X mean? Does the X mean I like it? Does the X mean I want to try to record it? You know, what does the X mean? Okay, here's one that I absolutely <laughs> love. Okay. This... And you know, if Elvis was sitting here with us, he'd be, put that back. Put it back. I don't want to talk about well, that. that. Exactly. And you get, I get that vibe too, because this is any day now mm -hmm. which of course was recorded here in Memphis and right. it's his own record and it looks like it's been barely played yeah exactly I mean, I don't, it, it, you know it's in there and and I guess you know he didn't really like to listen to his own stuff no. too much maybe if he was working on something he would listen to it probably but yeah no not really he would much rather listen to records like nothing new by Fats Domino yes you know I yes. mean look at that you know you can really well tell worn. well worn and on the other side is Dance with Mr. Domino. Of course. Yeah, he would much rather be ta talk to us about these artists and what they were doing and what they were accomplishing and have you heard this song or that song. And very similar to Elvis's music catalog that he recorded, you've got R&B, we've got blues, mm -hmm. we've got country and western, we've yeah. got a little bit of everything. We here. really do. In fact, look what I just found. The, the Beatles. Beatles. Elvis has a Beatles record. And on the flip side of it, it's Hey, hey Jude. Hey Jude. Now, it says look, look, and it has the running time circled of seven minutes, 11, 11 seconds. seconds. Wow. I wonder who wrote look on there. Like. Have, it doesn't look like it's Elvis's handwriting. No, no, not his, but I'm sure whoever was like, mm -hmm. look, we, it, you know. Yeah, but you Elvis know, recorded it, but he didn't do a seven minute version of it. He didn't do a seven minute it. version no. of it. No, That's not at neat, all. Though. So yes, Elvis Presley does own a Beatles, a Beatles record. record. He yeah. has a few of them. Yeah, there's a few of them in the mix. Yep. <laughs> um, William Bell. Yeah. On the Stax label, we have it's Save Us by William Bell. Now, I didn't mean to uh, go to another Elvis record, but this one is a little more played. This is mm -hmm. Loving You. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, that one but looks like one, it has been played. This one has been played. It's kind of neat to find yeah. a few of his own records. Yeah, his course, own records yeah. are kind of scattered in here. You know, oh, speaking of Presley's and records, yes. I just came across the Billy Goat song on Legacy Records by a Presley named Jesse Presley. Elvis's, Elvis's grandfather. grandfather. Yes. Vocals by Jesse Presley, guitar by Gene Stewart, recorded, recorder and clarinet by <laughs> Dave Kilkman, and guitar and bass by Gene Kilkman. The Billy Goat song. The Billy Goat song. I, mean, I don't know that that was a big hit. <laughs> Here's one that's got a few X's on it. It's a promotional and it's a uh, Danny. Okay. By Gene Booya. Yeah. You know, again, it's like there's X's on it. So what does that mean? Th there's symbol, you know. <laughs> there's there, gotta be a, a few, reason. There's gotta be a reason there's X's. Either it was I like it or I don't. Yep. How about some Ray Charles? Oh yeah. A lot of Ray Charles in here, I would yep. imagine. Something's got to change. change. On In the Heat of the Night mm -hmm. is on the other side. Can you see Elvis in the TV room jamming to some Ray Charles? Okay, this to me. Oh, wow. Okay, this is on the Sun record. And this is Anita Wood. Now, Anita, uh, who Elvis dated, mm -hmm. was also a DJ. Yeah. And then when Elvis was in the Army, 
Mm -hmm. She recorded this song at Sun Studio called I'll Wait Forever. And this is actually the DJ copy of it. Oh, is it? Okay, yeah, I see it's, it's not for sale. Yeah, it's DJ like, copy, mm -hmm. not for sale. Yeah. That's pretty neat. That is very neat. So we would date that then to probably 1959. 59, yeah, yeah. 1959. And Anita's a sweetheart. She she's, really she's a sweet is. lady. You know, and finding things like that in here are really, because you know that that's kind of sentimental. Yes. It has that sentimental yes. value yes. to it. Yeah. This is, wow, speaking of the Army, this one is a Sam Cooke 45 called Stealing Kisses, but look at the stamp on it. It's been played too, but the stamp actually says American Youth Activities, Bad Newham Center, U.S. Wow, Army. Wow, so this was in, in Germany This was with in Elvis. Germany with Elvis, yes, and it's now it's here at Graceland. And I love that. I love the label cover. You got to think it. that a lot of these records, well, some of them at least came to Germany. And or, traveled home. And traveled home. Yeah. Just like the comic books and things. And everything else that Elvis had. Yeah. Diana Ross and the Supreme. So we got some Motown in here. Um, oh, a, an entourage member and friend of Elvis's, Cliff Cleaves. Cliff Cleaves recorded a song. <laughs> On the summer record label. It's called Easy Going Guy. And I guess Cliff was an easy going kind of guy. It's okay then. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's just, we could stay here all day. I mean, we could. See, I'd mean, love to go through each one of these and like listen to them, put them on the record player. But that's what's really cool is because you'd be listening to the exact records that Elvis listened to. Yes. I mean, if Elvis was here, we wouldn't even get through one box because he would be telling us every little detail about that song and what this meant and what that meant and where he got it and right. when he got it. Right. What record store he went into to buy it. <laughs> you know, we can go hang in the TV room. Put them in the jukebox uh, see, and let's that's just what, listen. That's what we need to do. <laughs> and that's exactly what Elvis did. And we just, you know, stories about folks coming over and there's a bunch of his records in here now. I've come across coming Bossa across. Nova Baby and Burn in Love. Oh, look at this one. This one has been played wow, a wow. lot. Again, it's got X's on it, but it's Baby, What Do You Want Me To Do? Okay, now, do so, we know that yes, song or we do know we know that song? song? <laughs> so we know why there's an X on this yes. one because he loved it. He loved it and ended up recording it and it's on the checkered label and it looks like it was sung by uh, Jimmy Reed or written by Jimmy Reed. Oh, I finally found, oh, nope, Mario Alonza. Now that's one we know. We know that Elvis, Elvis loved, loved Mario Alonza. and listened to. In yeah. fact, Priscilla Presley talks about the Mario Lanza that he would listen to in Germany mm -hmm. with her, and then back home here at Graceland to the record collection. Right, yeah. I think she was here last Elvis week talking about that. Yeah. Yeah, do you want to listen to her? Let's take a look. Elvis was so much more than rock and roll. He truly was. He had a collection, and he had a record collection that no one would believe when I told him that, that he had Brahm, Brahms Symphony Fifth. He had Beethoven, he had Mozart. I mean, truly, he, 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 it was like he was a, I wanted to learn so much about, about m music. And he, he had, um, what, uh, Mario Lanza, Enrico Caruso, he had Duke Ellington, Louis Armstrong, Dean Martin, even Frank Sinatra. That was his diversity, really, in music. It's really quite amazing to actually listen to someone who had the opportunity to actually sit in the TV room or be in Germany with Elvis and do what we're doing, going through his record collection and listening to the records that he liked to listen to and the kind of things that inspired him and some of the things that he would do when he was listening to the recordings. You know, and I remember talking with Priscilla about uh, the song An American Trilogy mm -hmm. and she brought the Mickey Newberry version of that song to him. She said she went to a record store and purchased it and brought it. And I said, well, how did that go? Did you just bring it in and say, hey, listen to this? She said, no, 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 no. She's like, it wasn't anything like, she said, you know, it was a couple of days go by and then when he'd be sitting around listening to music and she you know kind of slip it yeah in there. right right yeah. but of course he loved that song yeah you know, and ended was, up recording it yeah. yeah well we do have a couple more really cool records i just found yeah um mac davis of course you, you mac know, is gotta uh, have some mac davis in the collection this is baby don't get hooked on me a hit for him and then the one and only roy hamilton now we know that roy was a big influence on Elvis, and Elvis loved his music, loved his sound, covered lots of his songs. Um, this one actually is, you're gonna need magic, and to the one I love. Oh, yeah. this I thought was comical, and just because Elvis had it, I wonder if somebody gave it to him as a gag gift, but <laughs> it's, it's called, I Wanna Spend Christmas with Elvis. 
I want to spend Christmas with Elvis. It's a little lambsy pen here. <laughs> I want to spend Christmas with Elvis, back with painted lips and pigtails. And I want to spend Christmas That's with Elvis. That's great. Yeah. Oh, speaking of George, the Jeeker. GK. Here's one of his records that he probably came from the studio. It actually has his, it says GK on it, and it has W-H-E-Y. Uh -huh. And it's stamped George Klein and who to return it to, and it is... The Happy the Organ. The Happy Organ. Ba -bum -bum -ba -dum. <laughs> I know that song. <laughs> Here's I'll Take You Home Again, Kathleen with Boots Randolph. Wow, so this, and this is a song that he yep. recorded. Mickey's tune, Boots Randolph. It's just, it's endless. Oh, some Brenda Lee. Brenda Lee, who... Uh, Rocking around the Christmas tree. Uh, oh, I guess who I just saw, Loretta Lynn. These are all Christmas songs on the Deco label. There's a lot of Christmas songs in here. A lot of Christmas. I mean, can you imagine Graceland at Christmas time without oh, music? Wow. No, you no, can't. No, you can't. Can. I mean, you've got it not, and Elvis wouldn't be listening to his recordings. Elvis would have had all of these other artists. Yeah, loaded up in the jukebox. Mm -hmm. You'd probably hear a pretty cool Christmas mix, actually, yeah. hanging out you here know, in Graceland. A little Bing Crosby, a little Brenda Lee, some, you know. Now, Florida what are Lynn? some of the older records that are in the collection you know some of the early stuff I, i'm guessing a lot of stuff that well the presley's probably didn't have a lot of records in tupelo just because they didn't have a lot of money then. no i mean i think some of the earliest records we have in the collection would actually date back to when elvis was in high school so it'd be here in memphis so it's stuff he would have got at pop, pop tunes, tunes. Um, probably one of my favorite things is actually we have a dean martin album that was released in 1953 which is the year elvis graduated okay and so when you look at that it's like we know that elvis you know admired dean and you know mimicked his sound sometimes a little bit and so it was kind of like he went to pop tunes he bought this record he took it home he listened to it loved it and he kept it all these years i tell you what let's listen right now to a few of the songs Elvis's actual records. We'll put them together okay. here and we'll listen to them now and take a look at them in the catalog. So it's so cool to hear what Elvis heard. Exactly, from the exact records that he listened to. It's so amazing just to hear that sound. So when you all cataloged these records, did you did you play them all? Or they did they all did they have a digital copy now in the archives as well for reference? Uh, yes, they do. Um, we did that with all the acetates as well as the records because even though these aren't things that Elvis you know recorded himself. They were things that are part of his legacy. Sure. You know, if we ever wanted to do Elvis's jukebox digitally, we could. That so. sounds like something we need to do. Hey, <laughs> sounds like an idea, course, doesn't it? Of course, you would have your work cut out for you, for sure. I mean, it's like, where do you start? <laughs> you know, and the funny thing about it is that some stuff that you go through here and it's just like, okay, Jason Love, right on. It's, you know, you listen to him and you look at them and you're like, why this record? Right. You know, why this artist? Was this something, like you said, was given to Elvis? You know, we've, I found one here that says Merry Christmas, obviously sent to Elvis in 1960. Dream wow. on. Yeah. Not the Aerosmith Not version the Aerosmith of it. Yeah. This is Janadora. But it's cool to have something dated yeah, there. Yeah, dated, 1960, and it says Merry Xmas on it. 
So that was yeah. Elvis' uh, first Christmas home from the Army. It really yeah. was, yeah. yeah. So I mean, neat. and I found these other two while we were listening to those others. But uh, mm -hmm. you know for a fact that Elvis loved this song. Uh, well, you know, very Blueberry play. Hill. Blueberry Hill by Fats Domino. Fats Domino, and he, of course, he recorded it in mm -hmm. 1957. And then there's concerts in Vegas where he calls out Fats Domino in the audience. Oh yeah, and when he introduces himself as Fats Domino. Yeah, yeah well, and, and that too. Else. Yes, and that too. Well, but that's uh, kind of cool because you know he cool. loved that. This yep. one. And then this one too, uh, which Elvis did cover, although it doesn't have much play, but it's Del Shannon's version Runaway. of Runaway. Yeah. Which was... Uh, which which was, is really cool. Yeah, it was a cool I mean, song. we could sit here all day. We could. And go back and forth and just like, look what this is and look what that is. And, and just, listen to some of these like oh, we gosh. did, which yeah. was Neat. which yeah. is really cool and folks do get a, a peek at some of what Elvis was listening to when they're on tour here at Grace yes Center. when they're in the TV room they get a chance to see from a distance the record collection that's down there and on the iPad tour we have like a list of some and with some of the labels and stuff like that so you can actually flip through and go oh what's in the collection and you can kind of get a little peek so then there's a is. record player in the TV room mm -hmm. there's and a, a jukebox and a jukebox mm -hmm. where else are there record players in Graceland Probably upstairs a lot. in Elvis's bedroom mm -hmm. there's a record player um, there's one in the jungle room. Mm -hmm. It's hidden in a stereo system, but there's one in the jungle room as well. So there's three that I know of off the top of my head. So there's that music I all play. around. Yes. Well, thank you for uh, opening up Elvis Presley's record collection for us. This These is... are mine. Okay, Angie. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but it's so fascinating to see uh, what Elvis was listening to here mm -hmm. at home. Uh, yeah. and, 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 you know, we kind of wonder what songs were... Um, favored more than others exactly and then you see some of these two they're demos like you mentioned a demo too that mm -hmm. johnny cash gave elvis yes we have a johnny cash demo in the so collection as well you have a mix of records that were handed to elvis mm -hmm. records that maybe gk brought over from the radio station and of course the ones that he actually went and bought at the record store. I itself. think those are the most important. Those really are. Can yeah. you imagine Elvis walking in and going, okay, let's flip through with this bin here and see what records I want and yeah. what's the latest ones that are out? Right. Or I'm looking specifically for this one record. Do you guys happen to have it? Mm -hmm. You know, all the fun things you got to do at record stores. And these are all the things you think about when you visit Graceland. So uh, come visit us soon and discover Elvis's record collection mm -hmm. and a lot more.